Square Enix. Bo, hello. Okay, so before we get into this proper, I think I want to finish some of the weapons that I have real quick. Then I can finish off the weapon stories that I have for them. So we'll just do this real quick. Strengthening its siege. We must strike at them now. All right, so this one needs oh, not many kills. So that'll be quick. To you too, Gandalf. You're just in time. Ah, uh, you missed nothing. I literally just started. I was just maxing out a couple of the weapons that I have. Honestly, this staff is better than the last one I got. But not better than the first one. Spell is more powerful, which is what I like about it. It's just it doesn't home in like uh, the first staff I got did. But that damage, though, really good. Okay, that's done. particular spell for this one I can't say it's like the most useful spell in the world or anything but it is quite amusing I will say that enemies over right in front of you. It's at least amusing.
Oh, right. This just creates a giant... It, it's kind of similar to a uh, Feng's Glaive, where the higher, more you level it up, the more circles you get. And it only uses, like, one bar of magic, too, which is nice. Just like Feng's Glaive. This weapon right here, this one is super good for its spell. already maxed up. Very good. Oh wait, this weapon's already leveled. What am I doing? You just tune it out. It's not that hard.
Mercy's here. Damn, it's got two spikes now for double the damage. Wow, and look how bloody the this one has gotten. Oh, and the two blades here finally formed into one. Chapter 10. Kaim and the dragon come to the ocean where they find a barricade around the giant fortress. So, treasure builder. There was once a man who built beautiful kingdoms that became treasures of his kingdom. So many treasures did he create, people came to say that his hammer was a tool of the gods. But one day, a war broke out between his country and its neighbor. All the men of his kingdom were called to join the army, and the builder was no exception. The man who hated destruction was no warrior. In the midst of the war, the architect was killed, and the beautiful towns and buildings he created were re reduced to mere broken rock. Until the moment of his death, the builder did not once take another man's life. Will the next owner of the Hammer of the Gods be a lover of creation or destruction? Hmm. I wonder. There once... There were once two bandit brothers whose infamy were known both near and far. 
With 200 men at their command, mo none dared stand against them. One autumn, they began to terrorize a mountain village. The desperate villagers appealed to a traveling mage for help. The mage announced that he would help the villagers, but in exchange, he would require a village girl as his wife. The mage then gave his, this mace to the brothers as a gift. No sooner had they accepted it than, it, that, that, than they began to fight. The whole gang took up arms, and in the end, not one bandit survived. But instead of giving him his reward, the villagers slew the mage. Soon thereafter, an evil plague fell upon them and left not one soul alive. Only the cursed mace remained. A long time ago, there were twin gods who gave man the gift of fire and knowledge, and protected him with their wisdom. But mankind fell into corruption, and the twin gods became wrathful. They sent storms and floods to destroy the cities, and great fires to burn the plains. Acknowledging their sinful ways, the people offered this great axe in penitence. It was a charm and offering, washed in the blood of sacrificed twin children. The gods turned the souls of the young twins into stars. Then they sealed the stars within this axe, a grim reminder to mankind that he must never again fall into sin. This Bardish is imbued with the mighty anger of the Storm God. Any victim that has the misfortune to be caught in the Tempest will have his very flesh and blood blown clean off his bones. In a small village there lived a boy who could control the winds. Hearing of this, the jealous Storm God came down to Earth and challenged the boy to a duel of magic. They agreed to see who would be first to remove a passing knight's cloak. While the god tried to blow a storm to tear the cloak away, the boy simply summoned a warm breeze that made the knight take off his cloak. Enraged that he had lost to a mere mortal, the Storm God summoned a wind that blew so hard, nothing was left of the boy but his bones. At the same time, the storm of rage entered the knight's bardiche. Now, oh. the wrath of a jealous god, huh? That couldn't take losing. An ambitious wizard sealed a salamander within the sax. It became imbued with potent fire magic and even greater destructive power. The salamander whispered to the magician, Feed the axe blood and we will become even stronger. Bewitched by the power, the wizard began to seek victims to slay. Well, shall you give us more blood? So whispered the axe, its appetite for flesh glow growing. The wizard, intoxicated by the power, had no means to resist. Not so long ago, the axe was discovered lying next to a withered mummy as dry as a petrified tree. Even now, the axe whispers to those drawn by the Dark Knight, Kill, it says. Stop telling me to do things! There are a number of elements that determine one's, one's own will. Conceptual objects, scientific facts, and empirical re realities all play a role when considering any immediate question. Hypothetically, in the regulation of judgment or in progress towards facts concerning the question, any thinker can acquire a rough estimate or intuition based on personal experience. Alternatively, the process is under the control of reason, what selection to make, on what issue to focus, and so on. In other words, the methods of fact consideration, judgment, and reasoning. Only those who understand the foregoing, the foregoing have the power to understand thought or sense, and recognize its worth in others and in, the, in themselves, thus achieving true and justifiable belief. Huh. I feel like I was just reading a textbook there. The leader of warriors seeks out their death. Deep in his heart fall the tears of heaven. The lakes of blood glimmer like beacons in the dark. The lesson steals life and blesses it anew.
Okay, so I still have a couple weapons to level. This weapon in particular was pretty cool to level because it used to be all stone, but as it leveled, it gradually became more metal. Like the stone was getting withered away and revealing what was underneath. Okay, so I need me the dragon hook. I need the raven feeder. Reward equipped. Oh, that's cool, Gandalf. Okay, so I think that's everything for now. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, chapter 9, it said, uh, just, I, the prerequisites for chapter 10 happening are just to get ending B and ending C. Uh, we're going towards the good ending now, uh, Rem. We're going towards ending D. Yes, right now the goddess is alive. Uh... on the ocean. Is there no end to the cult's power? Now, depending on which verse I get... Uh, 
Uh, all of our Pact members are with us in this timeline. In this tangent, whatever. Okay, so this is not the verse that I want at the moment. But since I got this one, that must mean that I've unlocked the other one as well. So let's check real quick. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there was another, like, break in the action, uh, another, like, tangent here. Because this one you had to complete within, like, a certain time frame. Oh, Chitango crushed. Uh, if you did it too slow, then you were on... If you, if you are too slow, you ended up on verse 2. But if you did it fast enough, then you ended on, on verse Ruben numeral 2. So let's go to this one. Yeah, at least it loaded. If the ships are left afloat, we will be unable to enter the fortress. Yeah, Dragon's back to being level 2 again. Yeah, one can assume that in this particular tangent, Akai went to get the Pact members first, then Fu Fury Eye was kidnapped, and then it leads to this, I think? That sounds right. might be the implication spook I'm not 100% sure but I mean wait till you get a look of the inside of the fortress okay so goddess's presence grows faint hurry came in this version of the stage yeah see even Angela said it's the same in this version of the fortress, Strange. the soldiers have already cleared out. Oh, 
Yeah. See, look, there are the doors that go to nowhere. This isn't the Sky Fortress, this is the Ocean Fortress. It just looks exactly the same. The goddess will certainly be at the Sanctum. Look further within! That's a good question, Mithras. How do they know it looks exactly the same as the Air Fortress if they never had been into it at this point? Th these are the questions. There is no trace of the enemy in this fortress. Could okay, I'm not gonna have time to get the other weapon. No, it is nothing. I just gotta make a break for it. I'll have to do the stage over. Poison Tongue, the magic attack is Phantom Eye. There was once a surgeon who saved many patients from sickness and death. Word of his skills spread, and so great did his renown, renown grow that he was appointed physician to the king. You know, I'm not even going to bother equipping them at this point. Because level 1 weapons are just not going to be very useful against the enemies we're going against. Okay, so this is what happens if you take too long on the first flying stage in Chapter 9. You get pushed back to Chapter 7. Okay, so I need to do verse 3 again. Get the other weapon on the second floor. The 
goddess's presence grows faint. Hurry, came. It is just the same as the fortress in the sky. Strange. I sense no humans here. A foolish thing is it not to board an ark when you know not where it sails. It is too quiet. There is no voice. Is the goddess truly here? There is no trace of the enemy in this fortress. The goddess will certainly be at the sanctum. Look further within. Could the goddess be... No, no, it is nothing. Okay, there's the other weapon from this verse. Widow's death, the magic attack is Faz Plasmological Phantorium. Wow, that is an awesome magic spell name. Plasmological Phantorium. Queen Brunhilde, daughter of Visigoth King Athanagild, was wife to see. Siegbert the first of Austrasia and ruled the kingdom as regent in her son's name after the death of the king. Ugh, that was a mouthful. Okay, so now we move on to the Ruben numeral 2 version of this verse, where we actually get to fight enemies. Oh, what a shame, Ariok. The poor thing's gonna starve to death. Yeah, I got a time limit again for this stage.
this will certainly be at the sanctum. Look further within. Six more kills. Again, how do you know that, Angelus? That didn't happen in this timeline. Seven more kills. Uh, the previous weapon I was using wasn't that good. Uh, oh, what was it called? Greed's Reward, that's it. But I gotta kill them all, Angelus. So this weapon isn't particularly good, but its magic spell is. Uh, it increases your attack power and makes you completely invincible for the entirety of the duration of the spell, depending on how much how much MP you use for it.
Now we're playing with power. Now, we're guts. Strength is unnatural. Believe the ether that flows from the fortress? Oh yeah, there's definitely too many of them for me to kill.
kill them all, though you have a thousand lives. To the goddess, now! You sure about that, Verdele? Because I seem to be doing a pretty good job at it. miss someone. He can't be having that. We can't be leaving people alive. There we go. So we got the weapon Love Keeper, the magic attack is Spirit Horn. The other one is Slaughterism, the magic attack is Thunderclaw. Look at that, it's a proper blade now, and not just a fossilized weapon. And that thing turned red. Yeah, it's very fitting that the we one of the weapons we got from a stage where we had to kill everything on the second floor is called Slaughterism. Pass it, not realize it. It was Love Keeper? Where's Love Keeper? There we go. A young couple blessed by fortune were to be wed. But on the night before the wedding, a small shining spirit appeared before the young bride. This sword belonged to a demented painter who murdered innocents every night and collected their blood. With this grisly harvest, he painted masterpieces the likes of which the world had never seen.
There was once a great merchant who sailed all the seven seas, discovering new lands and trading around the world. This merchant amassed a fortune beyond all compare. One day, the merchant heard of an enchanted weapon known to some as the Dark Summoner. It was said that this sword was hidden in the ocean to the south, a land swallowed in ages past. The merchant set out, resolved to find the rare and valuable sword. After many adventures and much hardship, he found it at last. The sword was impaled in the mouth of a demon statue. Suddenly, bolts of hellfire flew from the sword, and the merchant's ship sank into the watery abyss. Weeks later, his corpse was washed up upon the shore. The Shimitar clutched reproachfully in his hand. This is the largest sword in the world, too heavy for any mere mortal to lift. It is believed that till now, no warrior has been able to wield it. It was ordered forged by the warlord Vak the Pitiless. Made from the melted armor of his vanquished enemies, the sword announced Vak's might and grandeur to the world. The sword grew heavier each time it took a life, and it gradually became more and more difficult to wield. At, la at last, even its mighty owner could no longer swing it. One morning, Vak the Pitiless was found dead. Beside him, dripping with flesh and dyed scarlet with blood, lay the sword. Who had managed to raise the mighty weapon against him? Question for the ages. Oh yeah, I gotta read these two as well. An Imperial archaeologist unearthed this weapon's blade from the ruins of an ancient holy place. Believed to be the fossilized remains of some beast, the substance was incredibly hard. With great care and reverence, the scientists tried to sharpen the rock, but the substance, substance was impervious to fire, to acid, and to all the tool, tools of his workshop. Driven mad by the unyielding substance that sat reproachful, reproachfully before him, the science smashed it against his head again and again till he fell dead of his wounds. The darkly glimmering substance was the claw of an earth dragon, and only human blood could sharpen its edge. And so for ignorance did another scientist die. That's a cool story. A circular blade bladed sword owned by a noble family that lived deep within a great forest. It was said that the user of this weapon would be blessed by the gods with three lives. The sword was originally designed as a tool for torture. Its outer blade is sharp enough to bisect a man with one stroke, while the inner is kept dull to inflict hideous pain. Poison can be poured into the handle. As soon as the victim is cut, the poison flows into the wound and causes nearly instantaneous death. So cruel was this weapon judged to be, it was banned by the old kings. Soon thereafter, it became infamous as the tool of, of assassins. Wow. Pretty metal, gotta say.
space bridge? Are we too late? Alright, we got Sorrow's Companion. The magic attack is Jormungard's Tears. Ace owned by a warrior monk who was charged with fighting pirates. When he sailed the seas with his son at his side, no pirate could feel safe. So I need to get all 10 keys that are on in this stage. We cannot leave this den of evil as it is. Time, drive them from the fortress. Oh, okay, they're just inside chests. Alright, so there are seven keys on the first floor. I just have to find the treasure chests. I thought killing enemies would make the treasure chests spawn, but it looks like they're just there. I doubt there'd be any around the circular area, but it doesn't hurt to check. There's one here. Let's 
Okay, so that's two. Pretty damn solid weapon, I gotta say. Right, so I've got three keys now. Five. This, I'm hoping, is number seven. Yep.
Nine. <laughs> this sword's almost bi as big as, as as wide as the hallways I'm going through. All right, so I can't kill everyone up here. I need to make sure I get the last key. Okay, and then I have to go back downstairs. And it's practically at the start. Again. Oh, Gandalf, uh, are, are you still, like, like, not in the mood to join on Discord or anything? I know you were having problems yesterday. Are you feeling are you actually feeling any better? Oh, okay, that's good. Once I complete ending D, I'll have to do E. I don't know if I'm ready for that. But I knew full well I'd be doing that going into this. 
Gonna have to get that big wave combo ready. So we got Ozymandias' Might, the magic attack is Lightning Strike. This monk's spade was owned by the ruler of the greatest empire of the age. Said to control lightning and slice through blackness, it was dedicated as a guardian weapon in the Shrine of the Gods. Okay, so for this one, kill all enemies in under 3 minutes and 40 seconds, and complete the stage with at least 25% HP remaining. I think that sounds doable. It doesn't say I can't use magic. There we go. Alright, we got Pupil's Club. The magic attack is Ishtar's Volcano. This mace was made by an apprentice wizard with a single swing of a blacksmith's hammer. However, this apprentice could conjure little more than small flames. 